In this tutorial, we're going to go through how to create your comic document and start adding the graphics into your comic document. We won't actually be adding the text uh, in this one. We'll do that in the next one. So this is the first one we'll start with. So first up, you need to open Photoshop and we go to File and New. We're going to create a new document in Photoshop. We're going to set this to A4 size. So the size of A4, check you're in um, millimeters or centimeters. And the uh, width in millimeters is 210 width. The height is 297 millimeters. And then we get to the resolution. The resolution, when we're doing this in uh, for print, uh, when, we, when, when we want to do print resolution, we run at 300 pixels per inch. Now make sure this is pixels per inch and not pixels per centimeter. Now you might be thinking, yeah, but we don't work in inches. We work in centimeters and millimeters. Well, that's true, but the standard for print now um, has always been uh, in pixels per inch or lines per inch. So we're going to stay with that. Um, so just double check that you're 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters by 300 pixels per inch. Check that the background co uh, color is white. And we're going to name this uh, comic strip page one. Okay, so we create that document. So that should open up and you should see the whole thing. You're going to learn a few tools in Photoshop. Now, I mean, there are absolutely tons in here, but you're not going to use absolutely everything. You're going to use some fundamental tools that you, you will use pretty much every single time you open up Photoshop, and then you can build on from there. And we're also going to learn some shortcuts in Photoshop, some sh keyboard shortcuts. And so we're going to start with the first one, um, and we're going to zoom in. So if we select, uh, we press on the keyboard, the control button, and then plus, 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 and we are zooming in and minus control minus 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 we're zooming out so everyone do that you should you should be doing all of this as we move along through this tutorial you should be pausing the tutorial and doing this so at this point you should be zooming in and out of the document so when we zoom in we want to move around the document and this is another keyboard shortcut you hold down the space bar and the arrow turns into a hand and we're going to just move up into the top left hand corner so we can see the top left hand corner of our screen now we're going to create guides for our comic. We're going to have some standardized guides for these comics, and we're going to give it a one centimeter margin all around the edge. So we're going to create that margin now, and we're going to make sure that we stick to it. So at the top here and the side, you can see these rulers. If you can't see them, go up to view in the top menu and move down to the middle of the menu, and there's the rulers. And I've got it ticked, so I can see it. If you haven't got the tick there, then you just need to tick it, and you'll see these rulers appear. So we're going to, with the left mouse button, we're going to click in the in this top ruler and drag down. And we're going to drag to one centimeter uh, down. And then we're going to click on this ruler and drag out to one centimeter with the left mouse button. If you're not exactly on the one centimeter, don't worry. 1.02 is not going to be here nor there. That's fine. So we've done the top and the left-hand side margin. Now we're going to move across and down. Again, I'm just holding down the space bar and I'm just moving through the document. So I'm going to drag a line across and we're going to set this at 20 centimeters. And remember this, this height here is 29.7. So we're going to drag one down to 28.7. Again, if you're slightly, you know, 0 0.0 millimeter away, that's fine. Okay, so if I press control zero, if you press control zero, you'll zoom out and see the whole document. You can see that we've got these guides now that we've created. All right, so we now need to get our graphics into our document and we can do this a very spe uh, special way, very particular way. We, there's many ways of doing this, um, but we're going to do it very specifically because it's going to help us later on down the line. Up the top, we go to file and down to place linked. Now there's two places, place, place embedded and place linked. We could do place embedded and that just grabs the file and it puts it in our document and actually stores the file in our document. Now, if you have lots and lots and lots of graphics on, on each page, that file will get really, really big, and we don't want that. So we want to play, we want to use place linked. So we click place linked, and then we go to the, the folder where all our files are kept. Okay, so you have a H drive. So under this PC, you're either storing your files in OneDrive if you want to work on them at home, or you're storing them in your H drive at school. So if you click on this PC, you'll see these, this option here, and, and here's my H drive. 
you'll have one as well. So as we've said before, and you've been told again and again, you must store all of your files in one single folder in one single place. And that place cannot be your computer. Your computer might disappear the next week. It might not, it might be wiped. You might have to sit somewhere else. You might be in another room. You cannot save it into a computer. It must be on either OneDrive or it must be in your H drive. This is really important. So all your files are in one place. Now I'm, I'm storing these, uh, this is just a test one. So I'm just looking at, actually, um, it is in mine or in digital library. So we took some test shots. So everything goes in a single folder. In this case, this is gonna be uh, where I store my file and my final comic strips are gonna be stored in here as well. Everything sits in one folder. I can't stress that enough. If you don't do this, you're making a massive mistake right now. So stop, ask where to put it, ask, figure it out. If you don't know what's going on, stop and ask and make sure this is set. Right, enough said. Okay, so here's the file I want to import. You'll have a load of files ready to go, but um, I've only got one here for now. These are the original photos and this is the one I've edited. So I uh, place that file. So what that does, that loads the file and it places in my document. Now this file is quite large and that's absolutely fine. We're gonna shrink it down, but we're not just gonna grab one of the corners and just do this because what happens is this kind of thing can happen or this kind of thing can happen. You're thinking, no, no, I'll, I'll do it right. I'll, I'll make it look right. And you go, yeah, that looks roughly right. It's not, it's gonna look really, really bad. So this is how you do it. So we're gonna place the linked file and instead of, before you grab the corner, you're going to hold down the shift button on your keyboard, the shift button on your keyboard. So when you hold down the shift button on your keyboard, anywhere you stretch it from the corners, it retains its aspect ratio. And that's really, really important you do that. So you can see we're, we're not going fat or thin or anything like that. Okay, so you, you, you get it to roughly where you want it. Now make sure that you let go of the mouse before you let go of the keyboard. All right. So it's not some kind of it's not some kind of magic kind of I have to let go at the same time or I have to press it exactly the same time. If you're doing that, you're doing it wrong. Hold down the shift key, stretch it to where you want it, let go of the mouse button, and then let go of the keyboard. Okay. So get it to roughly the size you want it. You can always restretch it afterwards, and I'll tell you why you can do that when normally you can't. So I'm getting it to roughly where I want it. Now remember, you've drawn a. Um, you draw a sketch of this so you know roughly where everything's meant to go. Don't worry if it goes beyond where you meant it to go. So in this case, my image is going way off the top of the screen and off to the left-hand side. That's absolutely fine. Haven't got a problem with that. So at the top here, we've got this commit. So I'm going to tick this box and now I've committed to this size uh, of the picture. Now I can resize this later on and I won't lose any detail. Now, normally you can't do that when you're dealing with a bitmap image. Now, bitmap means we're, we're, we're dealing with pixels, and Photoshop is excellent at that. That's its whole point of existence, or was. And now it deals with vector images and original files, and basically, because we've done, the, because we imported the image the way we did by place in place linked, we are not affecting the original image. We're not degrading the original image, so we can stretch this to any size we want, and we won't lose any detail. Okay, so. I can move this around because I've, has, I've selected the move tool. So if you're on another tool, you can't move things around, that's fine. You have to click on the move tool to move things around. So just a point there. Okay, so this is our image we've imported. Now we can see this in the layer section. If you can't see the layers, it should be the bottom right hand corner, but if it's not there, you can go to window and layers and make sure that that's ticked. If it's not ticked, just go there, tick it and it will appear. So what we can see here is we've got the background, which is just a white block, and then we've got the scene one or that image we imported with this little padlock here. The padlock uh, shows that it's a smart object, that it's not going to degrade as we stretch it. And this layer system here is the hierarchy. This forms a massively important part of Photoshop. You must learn this part. It's crucial to making sure you're selecting the right thing, that things in the right order. It's you know, this is where you come back to time and time and time again. Really massively important part of Photoshop. So this is selected now. 
and we have the move tool so we can move it around. We're going to do one more thing. Whenever a tool is selected in the left hand corner, the options above change. So as I select this tool, you can see options. I get options for this tool. If I click the move tool, I get options for this tool. What we're going to make sure it is ticked is this show transform controls. And straight away, you can see that we've got these little um, uh, handles that we can change here. Um, we're going to use that later on. So it's, it's important to just tick that so you can see how to reshape the object at a later time. Now, as I said, you, you're kind of thinking, yeah, I don't want it going off the edge. I, I actually want it just, you know, from that corner down to here. I'm going to show you how to do that now. We're going to use a mask. Again, masking in Photoshop is an absolute must. If you don't know how to mask, you don't know how to use Photoshop. Right. There's two ways of creating this or two ways that I'm going to show you how to create this. If you are creating a comic with angles and weird shapes in it for each of your strips, this is the way to do it. In the third tool down is the polygonal lasso tool. Now you might have selected that and gone, it's a round tool. Well, if it's a round tool, you hold the left hand mouse button down for a second and an option pops up and you choose a different one. And we're going to choose the polygonal lasso tool. So now I've chosen that. That's just a, a way of selecting an area. So first up, we need to make sure that this layer is selected. So this has a small, so if we click on this, you can see there's a small uh, kind of rectangle cornered piece around background if we click on that first layer there you can see that that, that does that now we're going to affect this layer so we're going to make sure that that is uh, highlighted then we're going to start in a corner we're going to click in this corner and we're going to run down to here click across now i'm just doing this roughly if you want to be really accurate you'd hold down the shift key and it kind of clicks into um, diagonal and horizontal uh, and vertical so that's me holding down the shift key before I click. Now, if you're doing it freehand, that's fine. That's okay. Just um, bear in mind that it won't be absolutely perfectly equal. Anyway, so I'm going to click. Then I'm going to do click up here. So I'm doing an angle. I'm purposely doing an angle here. So I click up here and then move across. You see this little circle appear and click again. And now I have selected. And that's all I've done. I've just selected an area. I'm now going to create a mask. So down at the bottom of the layers, in the middle, there's this rectangle with a little circle in the middle. I'm going to click that. What that's done is it's created a mask overlaying the image that I've placed in there. And that was based on the selection I had. And you can see that that's here. You can see this black area is everything that's masked. And any white area is what I can see through this mask. So imagine a real mask on your face. The white areas are the bits you can see through. The black area is the actual mask itself. And so we can see that we've got this edge here. Now, that's only if you want to make this uneven kind of comic where it kind of slants from one end, from one uh, image to the next. So that's fine. You can do that. We're not actually going to do that. We're going to do, uh, on this example, I'm actually going to do uh, a, just a, a rectangle box that's, that's perfectly rectangle. So uh, I can right click on this uh, mask and I can delete layer mask and that's, I'm back to normal, okay? I'm gonna do a, a mask that's just a rectangle and I'm just gonna use the rectangular marquee tool. Now again, if you find that you've got something like the circle uh, ellipse marquee tool selected, you just hold the mouse button down, move to the rectangular marquee tool and let go. Now again, I'm gonna check that one that layer, always check what layer on before you do anything. And then I'm gonna click from that corner and I'm just gonna leave it there so this is the area i'm selecting and again i'm going to create a mask so down here bottom of the layer tab this rectangle with a little dot in the middle i'm going to click on that and i've created this mask again the black is the mask the white is the see-through bit and as as we can see that's happened here now in a general comic um whether you do a a, a, um, a polygonal lasso tool or whether you do a, a rectangular marquee everything from now on in is exactly the same no difference what we're going to do is we're going to create a edge because most comic strips, uh, each picture has an edge. So we're going to create an edge on this one and we're going to go up to layer again. We're going to make sure that we've selected the correct scene or the correct layer. And we go up to layer, layer style, and then down to stroke. So layer, layer style down to stroke. And we move this over slightly so you can see what's going on. Now, the size of this. You can see that as we make it bigger, that the stroke of this, of the edge of this is going to grow and, and get smaller. Now, 
we're going to set this to five five pixels okay and we're going to set the position to inside so by default that will be inside and we're going to click okay now you're thinking no, i can't really see that well if we zoom in and we're at 50 percent now you can see at the top here we can see the name of this document and we can see that we're at 50 percent zoom and what we can see is that that is a fine edge there. That's absolutely no problem there at all. When we and we're going to standardise on this. So don't go don't go creative on this one. We're going to standardise on this. Unless you do one that's particularly bold or something, then maybe. Um, but we're going to stick with black, five pixels wide, um, stroke to each um, image. Okay. At that point, we're going to click save because every now and again you must save. All right. Um, it's essential that you do that, otherwise these 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 computers do crash. Photoshop does crash. So we go File, Save. And because we've never saved this before, it wants to know where to save it. And so we're going to save it under the folder where all of your files are. Now, you won't see them because we're saving it as a Photoshop file and all your files you've saved as a, uh, a JPEG file. So go to your H drive or your OneDrive where you've saved everything, go into that folder and make sure that you save it in the right place. And this is the comic strip, page one, make sure you number them so we know which order they go in and then click save. And we're gonna maximize compatibility so any version of Photoshop will open them. And we're now saved. If you've made any mistakes along the way, uh, if you've done, if you've realized that actually this whole thing has gone super squishy or you know something strange has happened, uh, at the top right hand corner here we have a history button and again if you can't see that you should be able to click on window and click on history and you'll see everything you've done since you created this um, document so you can always step back it's a kind of a, a soup, souped up undo tool and you can see exactly what you did where along the way just so um, that helps you okay so that's it for this tutorial every image uh, works the same way if we want to add another image we'll go file place linked and we get another layer that would appear here and we do everything we just did um, to to this image in the next video we're going to go through how to add the text